Welcome back to another week of summer 2024 anime tier list where I rate the most recent episode and just judge it based on how I was feeling about it. Now, let's start with Perry. Perry had its finale and I know that I've been a hater in the beginning because of how stupid the character was, but that's pretty much the whole running gag and I just Found it more annoying than funny, but ever since the I Parry a Dragon episode, the pacing has been amazing. Honestly, the pacing from the beginning has been amazing in terms of the action, the combat we're getting. And the final episode was just seeing from the perspective of all the teachers that Nor thought like he was a failure to them. But at the end of the day, he was a legend. I think that like great is a decent place to put up Perry. Overall, I think Perry ended at around like a minimum 6.5 out of 10 anime. It's not bad. It's not amazing. It was enjoyable for what it was worth, and I'm glad that I at least checked it out. Next one. Tensura. Tensura was a great episode. It was. I was wondering how they're going to handle the Labyrinth arc. Not really an arc. It's just a Labyrinth section. And not even like the actual beginning of the Labyrinth, but it's like a demo, right? Like a beta test to see how everyone's gonna react to this labyrinth, this dungeon, are people gonna enjoy it? We just finished the tournament arc, right? Everyone's still in the stadium. We got these funny little parties. You know, we have like the bald party, we have Eren's party, we have Masayuki's party, then we have one fraud that just gets shit on. It was entertaining. It was pretty good. It was pretty amazing, I, I might say. I don't think it was like anything like peak, but it was definitely an enjoying episode. And I guess next episode, I'm not gonna, not sure how they're gonna end at Tensura, but maybe they're gonna have like um season four content build up, just kind of hype up the future content and end it on a high note. Who knows? But I think Tensura can leave on here for the last episode. Tower of God. That's alright. No longer mid. It's interesting that uh, this episode it was better because. Obviously, Blue Turtle, right? Whenever you have Blue Turtle back, and whenever you have any semblance of the original cast from season one, obviously it's good. And the fact that there was no fights, right? It's a good thing when the answer studio doesn't have any fights to adapt because they do not have a fucking answer for fights. They don't know how to animate shit. Everything kind of looks all right on frame by frame basis, but you know, <laughs> they, they don't know how to fucking do fights. So last episode, no fights. There was a brief clash of action, but besides that, it was just dialogue and build up and hyping up the workshop battle. Blue Turtle at its finest. We saw Rack Wraith Razor, you know. It's nice to see them again, so I think uh, it left a pretty decent taste in my mouth. I'm going to put it on good. Next up. Isekai Shikaku. So that was the conclusion of the... Was it here or here? I'm not sure. Maybe I should put Perry down here along with it. And maybe if that scales, then it should go down like this. Nah, I'll put this shit up. Isakai Shikaku had the conclusion of the whole... Uh, <laughs> they're basically, we're at a different place where the... The fallen sin of what was it? Greed? The girl, the schoolgirl. It's like, why is she so obsessed with the elf priest? What's going on? There's a lot of subversion in the beginning. We thought that this girl just sucked and she was an obsessive freak. And then it turns out, holy shit, it's her sister actually got spawned in. Oh my gosh, she's jealous of the sister? Oh my gosh, she's getting neglected here. Oh my gosh, she sent her sister to hell. <laughs> right? A bunch of stuff. It was a roller coaster because they would give us a little piece by piece of what's going on. And I'm like, oh my god, this girl is nasty. There's no redemption. Then it's like, okay, it's not actually not her fault. It's her dad's fault. It was... It was okay. It was enjoyable. It was a it was a nice conclusion to it, right? I'm not sure what they're going to end off with today. I think today is the last episode. Maybe it's going to have its own little slice of life thing going on. Who knows? Maybe it's going to hint at season two, but it was a delightful episode. Failure frame. Bro, what the fuck was that fight? What the hell was that stampede? Bro, that stampede was ass. Maybe I should put Tower God down here. I'm thinking of failure frame. Bro, that fight was so fucking bad if you can even call it a fight. Should we put it in Dookie? I actually do enjoy the, um... I enjoy the human side. You know, our rest of the students, seeing the different factions and the politics at play to see who's getting along with who. More other character development of like, you know, the dark hero <laughs> shitting on our girl. 
you know, the priest girl who doesn't have any skill yet, even though she's S class, and then getting mad at Kirihara and stuff, and the Kirihara speaking in third person. Kono Kirihara, I am God. And then the caption showing up. That's 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 so funny to me. But the fight, the stampede animation, holy fuck, that was atrocious, bro. Genuinely, like it was so fucking bad. It's it's just so hard to see. I think just because of the stampede being so CGI garbage, I'm gonna put the shit at Duke tier, bro. I will. I'm gonna put the shit on Duke tier. Next up, Oshinoko. Great episode. Or peak episode. I don't know. Cause like the peak is like the last five minutes of the episode, you know? When Ruby's father shows up, you know, at the cemetery when we're at with I. It's like, oh my god, the final boss is actually showing up. You know what? That single moment, yeah, it should be peak. Fuck it. It should be peak, bro. That single moment was so hype. And we still have two more episodes, right? This week and next week, and then I think it's gonna conclude. Two more episodes to go to Miyazaki and handle some shit. Maybe the white hair, silver hair girl that we saw hinted a couple episodes ago is gonna become crucial in the secrets of what's going on, but I love that ending, bro. That shit was actually so hype. Next up. Roshitere. Roshitere had its finale, and I think it was great. I don't think it was some amazing work of art, right? It was basically just the closing ceremony um, presentations, Alia being a big girl, you know, Masatsuka pretty much doing everything, and then gaslighting Alia and like, it's your charisma, girl. Yeah, you did this all. I mean, it's a teamwork, but I think Alia has a lot of development over the season. I think she's becoming more affectionate as well. This Ice Queen is slowly melting, and she's becoming more and more... Um, Less bitchy and more, you know, someone that we can root for. Yuki and Aino, they're just a power couple, right? They're just too fucking strong. They popped off, but I think that what Alia and Masasuka did together, they definitely appeal to the audience better than before. And now, as we go into the actual election shit, the debate arc, right? Because, like, this is all just pre preliminary shit. And season 2 stuff, that'll be very spicy. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. Next up. Ah, Osan Newbie Adventure. And I know that Osan Newbie Adventure, I'm gonna combine the finale because the finale was yesterday. Usually I do a cutoff on like, you know, Sunday, but fuck it, why not? Let's put it together. I think that Osan Newbie Adventure was great. I think that this is a very underrated power fantasy anime that people just neglect thinking it's a generic, just Unga Boonga fights. Nope. The fights matter because there are stories about these characters that we actually care about. It was a heartfelt moment between Broston and. Rick, as Roston could not relate to anyone, he was always alone, he was like, no one can, you know, I'm like an orc, but I'm intelligent and strong, I feel so isolated at the top, if only there was somebody that could actually fight me, you know, quarter thumb, just Unga Boonga style, and Rick was the man to do it. There is also more amazing development with Angie, as she's pretty much like the honorary member of the Ori Halcom Fist. And not even the finale, but the episode before that too, right? What was that episode? It was Broston and Rick, you know, hyping that shit up still. It was a fantastic anime. I still think that a minimum 7.5 out of 10, my final score, minimum, right? It could be definitely higher, is a fantastic score. You guys should check this out if you haven't. It's not a complex story. It's nothing deep, but it just does the things that it's known for really well. Hype fights where we converse with our fists. Similar to Windbreaker, if you care about like, yeah, pretty fight animation, but who cares? Well, we care because the character backstories makes us care about the stories, right? It, it, it does well on those elements. Definitely recommend Osan Newbie Adventure. Glad I checked it out. Makane Heroine! It was a great episode. Absolutely. Makane Heroine was a fantastic episode. It's truly now the... Uh, conclusion of the Komari arc and Komari is still the best girl. There's still one more episode which is gonna be like a slice of life ending, I think. Maybe like an anime only fan service episode, which I'm down for, but A1 Pictures has been cooking with this anime. I'm really glad that I checked it out. My community members told me to check this anime out because I was like, what the hell is this anime? I don't wanna watch this shit. Checked the first one out, it was like, oh, it's about a guy collecting all the cucks, girl. It's an interesting concept. But beyond that concept, it's like the polish. It's a fucking passion project, right? The people working on this truly care, and even if it's not a genre that I completely resonate or it's like my favorite genre, it is such a good experience to watch something where people have actually gave a fuck to it. 
quite often, you know, we're just 90% of the animes that we check out are just garbage slob, right? Which is just min max to fill the bottom line. There's no passion put into it. It's all fucking outsourced, or the workers working in the studio are getting abused, and it's just. It's a slave labor, but Makane, I can tell that the A1 Pictures people love this shit. It was a fantastic passion project. It's just like... <laughs> amazing. Delightful. Check it out. And... Wistoria, bro. Wand and sword. Listen. This anime doesn't need to be complex. It doesn't need deep writing. It can be a very simple cliche trope that's been done multiple times, but if executed correctly, like the most recent episode, holy fucking shit, it was hype. Bandai Namco Studio is going all out. They have warned us that basically this is going to be an all-star roster. This is another passion project, right? Who knows how season two is going to be, but like, oh my god, bro. That... <laughs> so, Rusty Snowman, Frosty Snowman, the more I thought about it, it's feeling like Rusty might be Elfie somehow. Maybe it's like a clone or some shit. But Rusty also gave, you know, uh, Will the fucking ice shard too. It's like, how the fuck did he get there? I'm not sure. But beyond that, it's seeming like Will is the sword, right? And like the magicians use their magic and Will is imbued with that element that he just like pops off. But they did a really good job setting up that grand evil duke as like a monster that cannot be defeated, right? It's like a 25th floor monster. Everyone's going all out. So many different strategies. Every time you think it got, you got a lethal blow on it, nope, it doesn't give a fuck. But the end, bro. Oh my god. The soundtrack, the animation, the direction, and then the credits rolling as it just slices in half. I felt ReZero Season 1 Episode 15 vibes, bro. In terms of just like concluding with the credits rolling and having such a amazing moment now re 15 that was a different type of climax where it's just like you're in utter shock of like oh my god what is this is it over now with story was more like oh my god this is so fucking hype then credits roll it's like Woo! but if you haven't seen Wistoria, bro and if you think that it's just a simple show you're right it is a simple show but just because it's simple doesn't mean it can't be amazing and it's all the execution of the tropes that makes it you know amazing and i think this is a pretty decent list you know failure frame listen the fucking stampede was an embarrassment how the fuck can you call that animation tower of god eh eh i feel a tower of god might be should be here but i also don't want to disrespect these two shows so i'm gonna put tower of god down here these two shows were good they were these shows were fucking great for the reason i explained and these two just simply just peaked amongst the competition and i think this is gonna be the last weekly tier list I'm gonna do for summer 2024 obviously due to different schedules of animes ending at different times I can't just like do a weekly one after this you know seemingly final week because Oshinoko has two more weeks and shit but I think uh the next tier list I'll do will be the final summer 2024 tier list and that's it from me see you next time